good evening aspirants welcome to the news analysis discussion session by shankara as academy for the date 3rd of june 2022 these are the list of articles we will be discussing today without wasting much time now let us get into the discussion look at this news article the news article mentions that the international liquid mirror telescope saw the first light recently that is telescope has been commissioned it will start scientific observations in october this year so let us see few relevant facts about this telescope see as the name suggest this telescope has a liquid mirror so what is it a liquid mirror is the one that uses a liquid material as a reflecting surface when it is spun this is based on the principle that when a liquid is steadily rotated its surface would take up a paraboloid shape a perfect paraboloid directs and concentrates light to a focal point of a telescope this happens due to the influence of gravity and centrifugal acceleration here gravity pulls the liquid down and the inertia of the centrifugal force pulls it radially sideways this principle was first realized by sir isaac newton now what liquid is used in these types of telescope since the liquid needs to be a mirror it should reflect light so liquids like mercury gallium gallium indium alloy or oil infused with reflecting particles are commonly used now when this liquid mirror is used in telescopes it is called the liquid mirror telescope majorly mercury is used as the reflecting liquid this mercury is kept in a bowl container which is also called as a bath the bath is a lightweight structure whose surface is parabolic and only a thin layer of mercury is needed to produce the accurate mirror shape this ensures that the mirror overall remains lightweight even though mercury has high density then a camera is put at the focal point of the paraboloid so what happens is the bath is rotated smoothly around a accurately vertical axis at a constant angular velocity the rim of a typical 4 meter mercury telescope spins about 3 miles per hour and the images are captured in the camera now let us see certain factors that are ensured in the liquid mirror telescope first the liquid mirror acts as a primary mirror that is it is the mirror that collects and focuses the incoming light in a reflecting telescope second the mirror has a fixed position third the mirror has to remain accurately horizontal and cannot be tilted why is that this ensures that the liquid does not pour out and it always point towards the zenith that is directly overhead because of this the liquid mirror telescopes are also called as zenithal pointing telescope next the mercury is covered with a thin layer of transparent mylar which is kept few centimeters above the mercury surface this helps in eliminating the ripples formed due to the spinning and mylar also acts as a protection from the wind disturbance next due to the toxic nature of the mercury suitable protections are taken to protect the operators of the telescope now the major advantage of the liquid mirror telescope over a conventional telescope is that it is very cheap this is due to the low capital and operating cost liquid mirror telescope cost only 1 to 2% of a conventional glass telescope mirror of same size and a conventional glass telescope mirror needs to be cleaned adjusted polished and aluminized what does aluminized mean aluminized mean a aluminum film is deposited on the glass but these are absent in the case of liquid mirror telescope so a liquid mirror telescope is also cheaper to maintain this low cost advantage of liquid mirror telescope also allows it to be dedicated to a narrowly defined project which is unpractical with conventional telescope as they are expensive apart from these advantages liquid mirror telescope has a major drawback which is liquid mirror telescope always have to look straight up at the zenith that is overhead and cannot point at any directions or at different objects see this limits the telescope's field of view but this drawback is also minimized because of earth's rotation which makes our zenith to move continuously so these are the basics about the liquid mirror telescope now the news article talks about an liquid mirror telescope called as the international liquid mirror telescope it is built with a collaboration among india belgium poland and canada it is the first liquid mirror telescope in the country and the largest in asia there are three main components of the international liquid mirror telescope first is a primary rotating mirror 
it is a 4 meter liquid mirror and uses mercury as a reflecting liquid second is the focal structure the third is the upper end the upper end is composed of a charged coupled device camera and a optical character international liquid mirror telescope is kept at the aryabhata research institute of observational sciences site in davasthal in the state of uttarakhand the site is located at davasthal peak in the central himalayan range in india this site is chosen due to its ideal condition like it has approximately 210 clear nights in a year which will help in capturing the image clearly know that international liquid mirror telescope is the first liquid mirror telescope designed exclusively for astronomical observation so it will be used to carry out deep survey and height photometric and astrometric observation of solar system galactic and extra galactic objects within a narrow strip of sky it is expected to detect and regularly monitor quasars supernovas asteroids as well as space debris that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw the basics and the components of a liquid mirror telescope also we saw about the recently commissioned international liquid mirror telescope in uttarakhand okay with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article see this article here it says that india's merchandise trade deficit widened to a record 23.33 billion in may month this is because exports grew by 15.5 percentage that is 37.3 billion dollars while imports jumped to 56.1 percent that is 60.62 billion dollars and this preliminary data is from the commerce and industry ministry the article also says that goods exports shrank 7.2 percent from april's 40.19 billion dollars and this results in the trade deficit for the first two months of 2022-23 period and that is all about the news article given here in this context we will brush up some basic facts for prelims perspective okay see every day indians and indian entities such as firms and governments import foreign goods and services and they also export domestic goods and services and apart from these they receive investments from abroad and make investments in other countries also know that each of these transactions involve a demand for a foreign currency or a demand for indian currency for example we need dollars to import something from the united states or to invest in one of united states stock exchanges by the same logic other countries need indian currency to buy goods from india or to invest in indian stock exchanges the interplay of these transactions decide the exchange rate of the rupee vis-a-vis -vis the foreign currency and recording of these transactions is called balance of payments or bop know that the bop has two parts one is the capital account this includes all the types of trading in capital in other words all investments inside and outside of the country are recorded here for example if an indian firm invest money in the united states to build a new company there or if a indian buy stocks in an american exchange the second part of the bop is the current account see all the trade in goods and services is noted here for example if a indian imports an american gadget or software made by an american company or if an american entity imports indian steel or engages an indian it company to create a software see the current account has two specific subparts first one is the import and export of goods this is called the trade account the second one is the import and export of services this is called the invisibles account now with this basics let us see the deficit first of all what is trade deficit see it is a broad term to be more specific it is a generic term it is possible that a country say india imports more than it exports in such a case it would have a deficit on its trade account in other words more money is going out of the country than coming in see this is called trade deficit now coming to current account deficit it is the shortfall between the money received by selling products to other countries and the money spent to buy goods and services from other nations if the value of goods and services we import exceeds the value of those we export the country is said to be in a deficit and the difference between the two values is called current account deficit 
know that current account deficit includes net income including interest and dividends and transfers like foreign aid also note that the current account deficit also includes the remittances transferred okay see india's current account position is largely on the negative side because of our country's excessive dependence on imported oil okay now moving on to capital account deficit as we saw earlier the current account consists of visible trade that is export and import of goods and invisible trade that is export and imports of services it also includes unilateral transfers and investment income that is income from factors such as land or foreign shares but the capital account is a record of inflows and outflows of capital that directly affects the nation's foreign assets and liabilities the components of the capital account include foreign investment and loans banking and other forms of capital as well as monetary movements or changes in the foreign exchange reserves so a capital account deficit occurs when the equity turns negative this means the total amount of liabilities exceeds the total amount of assets here a point to note is that nri depositing money in an nri account comes under the capital account whereas someone sending money via remittance comes under current account note this difference okay now moving on to balance of payment deficit see like trade deficit the balance of payment deficit is also a broad term a balance of payment deficit means a nation imports more commodities more capital and more services than it exports okay this is about balance of payment deficit that's all regarding this discussion see in this discussion we saw some basic terms for our prelims examination in that we saw about current account deficit capital account deficit trade deficit and balance of payments deficit with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this news article this news article talks about the state formation day celebration in telangana see the telangana chief minister mentioned in his speech that people in the country need employment projects power and water this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us discuss about article 2 3 and 4 of the indian constitution which is talking about the formation of states renaming of states etc now let us start our discussion first let us start with article 2 see this article that is article 2 talks mainly about the admission or establishment of new states article 2 states that the parliament may by law admit into the union or establish new states now moving on to article 3 Article 3 talks about firstly the formation of new states secondly it talks about the alteration of areas boundaries or names of existing states now comes the question how can it be done see this can be done by parliamentary laws firstly parliament may by law can form new states this can be done by separation of territory from any state or by uniting two or more states or parts of states or by uniting a union territory to a part of any state secondly parliament may by law can increase the area of any state not only this parliament may by law can also diminish the area of any state fourthly parliament may by law can alter the boundaries of any state lastly parliament may by law can alter the name of any state also okay note that in these five clauses that is from article 3a to 3e the word state includes a union territory also okay here when we talk about article 3 there are two important condition that you have to remember one is the bills for the purpose mentioned in article 3 can be introduced in either house of the parliament but only on the recommendation of the president secondly the bill that affects the area boundaries or name of any states should be referred by the president to the state legislature and the state legislature can express its views within such period as the president may allow okay this is about article 3 now moving on to article 4 see article 4 talks about this it says that laws made under article 2 and article 3 provides for the amendment of the first and the fourth schedules now do you remember what is spoken in the first and fourth schedule see the first schedule talks about the names of the states and the union territories it also includes the territorial jurisdiction of the states 
now moving on to fourth schedule see fourth schedule talks about the provision in relation to the allocation of seats for states and union territories in rajya sabha okay then article 4 also mentions that no such law as mentioned in article 2 and article 3 shall be deemed to be an amendment of the constitution for the purpose of article 368 okay that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about article 2 article 3 and article 4 of the indian constitution with this let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article look at this data point article it talks about india's domestic crude production see the domestic crude production in india has been on a constant decline in the financial year 2022 it slipped to 28.4 million metric tons this is the lowest in over two decades See India is the third largest consumer of oil but for 85% of its needs our country depends on imports this is the crux of the data point given here in this context let us analyze the data point and extract some important points which will be useful for your main answer writing before that we will see about the distribution of petroleum or mineral oil in India which is important for your prelims okay See petroleum and mineral oil products are functional fluids derived from petroleum. See to form fuel or non-fuel products we have to refine petroleum. This can be done using midstream oil and gas processes. The fuel produced include gases, petrol, kerosene, diesel and fuel oil. While the non-fuel products include petrochemical feedstock, base oils, mineral oils, intermediaries and base polymers. Okay? See the term petroleum is derived from the Latin prefix petra meaning rock and oleum meaning oil. So petroleum essentially means rock oil. This term is correct because petroleum are actually extracted from sedimentary rocks. See the term can be used to describe any mixture of gaseous, liquid or solid hydrocarbons found beneath the earth's surface. It is a naturally occurring hydrocarbon based fuel with various molecular weights. Just have a look at this table to know about the well-defined elemental composition of petroleum. See, petroleum or mineral oil is obtained from sedimentary rocks of the earth. Now, just have a look at this image to know how petroleum or mineral oil is being formed. See, firstly, dead tiny sea plants and animals got buried on the ocean floor. Then, over the time, they were covered by layers of sediments and rocks. Since these are all buried deeper and deeper, they will be under enormous heat and pressure. As a result of this, they are turned into oil and gas. This is what we extract during drilling today. Okay? Note that petroleum fuels on burning gives little smoke and leaves no ash. So, they are a better fuel than coal. Now, let us see about the distribution of petroleum and mineral oil in India. See the process of formation of petroleum or mineral oil started in the tertiary period that is 3 million years ago so most of the oil reserves in india are associated with anticlines and fault traps in the sedimentary rocks just have a look at this image to see how oil is trapped in anticlines and fault traps in the sedimentary rocks see when we talk about the distribution of petroleum or mineral oil we should know about the petroleum and natural gas basins in india see the petroleum and natural gas basins in india are the upper assam basin the west bengal basin the western himalayan basin the rajasthan saurashtra and kutch basin the northern gujarat basin and finally the ganga valley basin note that mumbai high the kambat gulf and assam are the most productive area in case of petroleum or mineral oil Now let us start the second part of our discussion. See, here we are going to see about the analysis of the data point which will be useful for your mains examination to make your answers look unique. Now look at this graph. This graph shows the import dependence of India on crude oil. As I mentioned earlier, India is the third largest consumer of oil, but the country failed to increase its domestic production. Because of this when the crude oil prices in the international markets increased India's import bill grew in large numbers so India's import bill for crude oil stood at dollar 120.4 billion in the financial year 2022 okay now comes the question why is India unable to reduce its import bill by increasing its domestic production 
For this, there are two main reasons. Firstly, it is due to its aging oil wells. Just have a look at this graph. This graph shows that the dry oil wells are increasing. This is happening due to the increasing demand in our country. The aged oil wells are the ones which had become less productive over time or in simple words, it is becoming dry. And you can also see the new oil wells are not enough to meet the country's demands. Because of this, the crude oil production in India is decreasing. Just have a look at this graph to know how the domestic crude oil production in our country is declining. See, secondly, there are less exploration or discoveries. See, to understand this, look at this graph. You can very well understand that whether it is development of wells or exploring wells, both has declined. See, here development of well means maximizing the known resource and exploring wells means locating new resource of oil. Okay, that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw the basics about the formation of petroleum or mineral oil. Then we saw about the basins where petroleum or mineral oil or natural gas is found in India. Finally, we saw some points from the data given in the data point. Okay, that's all regarding the news article discussion session. Now let us take up the practice prelims questions. We have four prelims questions today. Let us see them one by one. Let us take up the first question. See, this question is about the International Liquid Mirror Telescope. Two statements are given. We have to find the correct statement. Let us take up the first statement. It uses a 4 meter diameter rotating mirror made up of liquid mercury to collect and focus light. See, from our discussion, we know that this statement is correct. Now, let us take up the second statement. It is kept near moon's north pole. See, this statement is incorrect. First, because International Liquid Mirror Telescope is on Earth and it is kept at Aris site in India which is in Davastal Peak in the Central Himalayan Range in Uttarakhand. Second, it is incorrect because in Moon we cannot use liquid mercury as it will freeze. Instead, in case of Moon, low temperature ionic liquid that do not evaporate are employed. The liquid would have to be made reflective by depositing a metallic film on its surface while the mirror is spinning. So, statement 1 is correct, statement 2 is incorrect. So, the correct answer here is option A, 1 only. Now, let us take up the second question. This is also a two statement question. Two statements are given, we have to find the correct statements. Let us take up the first statement. Current account includes only the visibles. See, this statement is incorrect because as we saw in our discussion, current account involves both visibles and invisibles. Visibles here mean goods and invisibles means services. Now let us take up the second statement. Currency depreciation makes the imports cheaper. See, this statement is also incorrect. See, depreciation happens when the demand for a currency goes down. Let us take the Indian currency for example. Let us say it is 60 rupees against 1 dollar. Now it has changed to 75 rupees against 1 dollar. Here the value of Indian rupee has actually declined. Think about it. Before, to get a product worth $1 from the United States, you have to spend 60 rupees. But after the depreciation, you must pay 75 rupees. So, rupee depreciation has made the import costlier and not cheaper. So, since statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 is also incorrect and they are asking for the correct statement, the correct answer here is option D, neither 1 nor 2. Now, let us take up the third question. This is also a two-statement question. Two statements are given. We have to find the correct statements. Let us take up the first statement. Diminishing the area of the state amends the fourth schedule of the Indian constitution. See, this statement is correct. Because diminishing the area of a state comes under Article 3. Right? So, we saw in our discussion that any changes made through Article 2 or 3 requires amendment of both first and the fourth schedule of the Indian constitution. So, statement 1 is correct. Now, let us take up the second statement. Alteration of the name of the states can be done by the state laws only. See, this statement is incorrect. Because alteration of the name of the states can be done by parliamentary laws only and not state laws. This is mentioned in Article 3. See, the states can initiate a process to alter its name, but it cannot wholly do it by its own law. So, statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect. So, the correct answer here is option A, 1 only. Now, let us take up the last question. See, two statements 
about petroleum or mineral oil is given we have to find the correct statements let's take up the first statement all sedimentary rocks contains mineral oils see this is wrong okay not all sedimentary rocks contain mineral oil okay now let us take up the second statement all products produced by refining petroleum are all fuel products see this statement is also incorrect not all products produced by refining petroleum will be fuel products there will also be non fuel products like petrochemical feedstock base oil mineral oil intermediaries and base polymers so since both the statements are incorrect the correct answer here is option d neither one nor two if you like today's discussion like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankara as academy youtube channel